34-year-old Aleem was shot in the head. He was a bread maker and the sole provider for his family. His 80-year-old father is inconsolable, his mother speechless. His disabled brother with three kids, who Aleem raised, has no clue how the family will survive the loss. They didn't even let his body home for the last riot. What happened to the government? What's happened to the police that it came to this, firing bullets? On December 20th, some people here in the city of Meerut in Uttar Pradesh tried to protest against a controversial new citizenship law that many say discriminates against Muslims. The police say the protesters pelted them with rocks, which led them to use force. Aleem's family says he was not even part of the protest and was merely walking back home from the restaurant he worked in, Tim. They show us a video with someone they say was a witness and claiming he saw the police shooting him. Activists who went on a fact-finding mission to the city soon after the killings say most gunshots were above the waist and appeared targeted. This is absolutely quite deliberate shooting to kill. It is not following the standard operating procedure of announcing. There were no announcements, no warning announcements made, nothing of the kind. And no attempt to uh, use tear gas or water cannons or anything like that. No attempt to shoot at the feet first. It was straight away a shooting to kill. Activists accuse the police of being biased against Muslims. In a recent video, the city superintendent of police, Akhilesh Narayan Singh, was heard telling people in a Muslim-dominated neighborhood to move to Pakistan. We asked the superintendent about the allegations. I won't comment on that. And while he admitted that the police did fire shots, he said it was protesters with illegal firearms who killed the people. However, he added the police were investigating. There's a big difference between a trained and an untrained shooter. The mob doesn't see whether it's firing from behind or front. He said that a dozen police officers were shot and injured and shared this video. People here say they are demonstrating for their right to live in the land of their birth, India. The Citizenship Amendment Act makes it easier for migrants from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan who aren't Muslims to gain citizenship. Critics say the law could lead to many Muslims losing their citizenship. Staging protests is our right. There should not be violence, so I oppose that. Whatever the police are doing, I request them not to do it. They should also listen. We are also Indians like you. We are also humans. As protests continue in the capital and other parts of the country, the government insists the law will not be repealed. Protests have been ongoing since Parliament passed the law earlier in December. But a student protest in Jamia Millia Islamia University in the capital a week ago turned into a movement of hundreds of thousands of students and anti-government protesters nationwide. People were angered after government forces fought with students and stormed the campus, firing tear gas into the library and classrooms. The worst violence has been in Uttar Pradesh, where more than 5,000 people have been detained. At least 1,500 people have been arrested in other parts of India. Some Muslims can get citizenship under the Citizenship Amendment Act, but it's feared millions who are unable to provide proof could be rendered stateless, even if their families have lived in India for generations. In August, the Indian government revoked the special status of Indian administered Kashmir. It divided the state into two territories to be directly ruled from New Delhi, one consisting of Jammu and Kashmir and the other of Ladakh. And in the northeastern state of Assam, nearly two million people, including Muslims, have been excluded from a list of citizens, raising fears they could be rendered stateless. India's Supreme Court has awarded control of a disputed religious site in the town of Ayodhya to Hindus for the construction of a temple. Many Hindus believe the site of a former mosque was the birthplace of the warrior god Ram. And now there are protests over the new citizenship law. Indian citizens from all different religions and faiths and castes and uh, races. So um, 
And, and this is a fight about what this country is going to become. We have had 70 years of a secular, pluralist, mm. diverse nation. Uh, the question is, will we remain so? Or will we become a majoritarian, exclusive um, Hindu nation? That is the question before the people. Is that what is at stake here? Is this citizenship amendment law a direct attack on the secular, fundamentally constitutional secular nation, uh, nature of India? No, so there is no rhyme or reason why uh, Sri Lanka is not on the list, Myanmar is not on the list, Nepal is not on the list, and Bhutan is not on the list. The only reason is that the minority protection logic applied to these non-Muslim majority countries would require the government to include Muslims. So this is a fairly blatant attempt to, to use religion to divide Indians, but also, you know, Article 14 of the Indian Constitution, it guarantees the right to equality, not just to those who are citizens of India. It guarantees the right to equality before Indian laws to all persons including those who are not yet citizens. So A, it is a breach, the law itself is a breach of the Indian constitution. What you're creating is a two-track system where some people, based solely on their religion and nationality, get citizenship without having to prove anything, and some others have to go through an extremely onerous uh, system of procedurally providing evidence of persecution uh, in their countries to, to maybe get citizenship, right? That classification, because it's based on religion, and not if, if the government, uh, India absolutely needs a refugee law, a generous, fair, mm. and just refugee law, but it has to apply to everyone who's persecuted, not based on some religions who are and some who are not.